I was laying here. My bag was right next to me. A guy literally came, snatched it. Something a little different today. This is my boyfriend, Jalil. <laughs> Sometimes you see him on Instagram, but I asked him to sit with me here so that we could both share a story of what happened yesterday. We've had a very relaxing morning, but we're just like uh, so insanely lucky that today we've also not been dealing with a bunch of insanity. Um, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> we're gonna share the story of what happened. We both work remotely and we've been working remotely this week. Yesterday in the afternoon, instead of taking a nap, I said, it's the best hours of the day, we should go to the beach. And of course, with me being on Instagram and wanting to take photos, and by the way, he's usually the guy taking the photos, <laughs> I brought like all of my equipment. I brought this camera, I bought my, brought my phone, I brought my wallet. What did you have? I had my wallet, my phone, um, but we had car keys, house keys, like literally everything with us, uh, speakers, yeah. all that stuff. And we decided to go to a beach called Carrillo. Yep. And it's known for being beautiful, but nothing is there. So essentially it was an, an empty beach and I thought it'd be a great plan to go there and just have a little snooze. So we got there yesterday afternoon around 2, 2.30. I did my photo shoot as per usual. Jalil took the photos and it was beautiful. There was no one around. Um, it was great. Then what did we do? Jalil had a speaker and I said, let's go for a dip in the water. So with all of our stuff in my backpack, all of our towels, we walked out to where the water was, left it on the sand, and then we went and took a dip for maybe five minutes. Five even. minutes, yeah. And like our stuff was, how how much? It's, it's far enough away, probably a couple hundred meters. We were watching it from the water, and there was a mom nearby with her kids. We could have asked her to watch, watch our, our stuff. stuff. Yeah. Um, didn't. Um, so yeah, we had our pile of everything there, thousands of dollars worth of equipment, and we went for a dip, walked back, grabbed our stuff, and everything was great. So then we decided to lay our blankets down in the shade and have a little snooze and well I think we weren't gonna go to take a nap per se but we just wanted to relax uh, in the shade it's really beautiful surrounded by palm trees yeah and um, so we just laid our towels down and decided to hang out I'd turn the music off just because it's beautiful to hear the ocean and like you know the weaves the leaves rustling so that was kind of the the setting yeah and I had brought another bathing suit I can't remember why I guess because I didn't want to lay in a wet bathing suit. So once we laid down the blanket, I looked around to see if we were actually alone. And in the distance, I saw a guy in a red shirt sitting there watching us. So I thought, okay, I'm not going to change into my dry bathing suit. There's someone here. And um, Jalil laid down, closed his eyes. I also laid down next to him and I had my phone up, like holding it like this. I was texting one of my uh, team members, actually. And... All of a sudden, like, I don't, it, it, it happened so fast, so I don't even know if I saw the guy coming, but all of a sudden, the guy in the red shirt was next to me with my black bag, my backpack, right next to my hip as I'm laying down, and he's just there looking at me and snatching it, grabbing it. And uh, I think my first instinct or first reaction was I yelled, hey, like as loud, kind of like a scream, but it was just like, hey! Right? Yeah. And that's what woke you up? Yeah, I mean, I was, you know, I wasn't completely asleep or anything, but I just heard you scream and I didn't even see it out of the corner of my eye. But I just immediately got up and realized that this guy was taking off with the backpack that had literally everything in it and would have made, you know, the last few days in, in Costa Rica very challenging to kind of um, navigate. Yeah, because I was normally wearing a fanny pack, a fanny pack that had everything, but the fanny pack was in the backpack. This guy had been watching us who knows for how long, like probably when we were doing the photo shoot, he could have seen me at a camera. He might have actually seen us when we were in the water and our pile of stuff was just there and maybe he was, maybe he would have tried to take it then. He was laying down, I was laying down. I wasn't asleep, like I was on my phone and the guy crept up right behind us 
and my bag was not on me, but it was right at my hip. And all of a sudden he's just there snatching it. So I scream, Hey, um, I don't know if I said anything else. Um, it wasn't like help or it wasn't like that's ours. It was just like, Hey, and then faster than I got up, Jalil got up amazingly and started running after him and he bolted. So he had a plan. He, he ran through the rest of the palms to the road. And I don't, I think I ran like 10 or 20 feet, but then I, I stopped because I thought, well, what if there's more people here to take the rest of our stuff? And I kind of lost track of what was on our blanket. It was only my phone in my hand and our speaker. But once I made that decision to hang back and like, oh, what else do we have here? It was too late to catch them. So Jalil like immediately, I don't know how, but from when I screamed, he jumped up and was probably like 10 feet behind the guy. Yeah, he probably had like a 15 foot jump on us, 10, 15 feet. Um, yeah. And he was just like, he was in shoes. The biggest difference was that he was in shoes and I was barefoot. And from the beach, there's the, this like section of palm trees that backs onto a road. And the road's like really nice. Um, and then it's separated by uh, a small section of grass and trees. And then the next road um, heading in the opposite direction. And he had basically, there was a path to a gate that was on the other side of both uh, lanes and he kind of took off in that direction and there was kind of this dirt gravel road and I'm not sure it looks like it may be a farm but it's mostly jungle in there and there's a gate that was slightly left open and uh, he just took off in that direction um, and then started veering to the right into some really heavy bush that leads into the jungle and um, he had another guy with him that must have opened the gate or something for him, but I saw another guy in a blue shirt. So I, I just, you know, at that moment, it's probably not a great idea to chase after these guys because you don't know if they could have weapons or if, you know, anything could happen. And um, I, but obviously at that point, you're not thinking, it's mostly just adrenaline and knowing you're pretty hooped if, um, if you don't, get that bag back not to mention you gotta give it an effort i would never let that just fly well i found it amazing because i was in shock hanging back by the blanket watching this happen and jules running as fast as he can you are a soccer player so you have some running background running as fast as he can, as he can in bare feet yelling at the same time like all of that takes so much energy because i he was actually catching up to the guy too which i I couldn't see that from where I was standing. And I think the way we sat on the beach was directly in front of this gate on the other side of the road and everything else to the jungle was barbed barbed wire. Yeah. And so he just had a really good path to come up behind us, take the stuff and run through the gate. And so Jalil is running on through, like across the, the road of cars. There could have been cars coming. Yeah, I'm I don't really think lucky he got hit. I don't, I didn't consider if there was traffic yeah. or anything. And maybe that guy's buddy was like, you know, waiting for a clearing in the road for anyway, I don't know. But this guy is yelling. <laughs> what are you yelling? We need that. Well, it's a defi Puta! <laughs> definitely some Spanish swear words. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I don't know, I guess kind of angry with pleading with him being like, look, you know, it was just a couple of dollars and you know, stuff that is easily replaceable, sure, that's not a big deal and it's probably not worth risking it, but, you know, our rental car keys in there, our access house to keys. the house is in there, our, yeah. you know. I my, think you were yelling like, we need that, that's ours. Yeah. And amidst the swears. Yeah, amidst the swears. Um, and of course you're angry, right? Like it's definitely a violation of your space, but also, you know, you realize that he's gotta be pretty desperate to do something like that, but at the same time, like it's, it's, not going to be um, something that you just let go. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, it wasn't really clear clear of thought, and I managed to close the gap on him probably to about like three or four feet, and I just remember thinking trying to get him before he gets into the heavy jungle because at that point then you don't know what's behind it, and and I was just like I I can't do this with no shoes, and um, I was going to just either make a dive for him i don't know what but i was just trying to get within ideally arm's reach and just grab his his shirt um and as i gained on him uh he basically just dropped the bag and then his buddy had already disappeared into the thick bush and he 
literally did the same thing and I don't know why he thought maybe he felt like that I was gaining on him but he fortunately dropped the bag um, and you know I just grabbed it and, and kind of just stood there a little bit and just to see if there was anyone else around um, and and you know I, I mean like it's it's not uncommon to have pickpockets and stuff like that in any country right so um, but just them knowing the terrain a little bit better is 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 definitely worrying and then it puts you at a disadvantage especially if you're outnumbered but super lucky that he dropped it so we were just here on an empty beach laying down i was laying here my bag was right next to me a guy literally came snatched it i was as i was, as i was on my phone ran across the street jill was sleeping he had enough energy and adrenaline to run across the street across to that gate and his bare feet which are now bloody and catch up to the guy the guy dropped my bag it literally has everything in it so you think you're on an empty beach and he was over there the whole time watching me yeah like all odds were not in our favor at that point i i why do you think he dropped it and he I had, no he had a friend. Yeah, he had a friend. And you must have been super close to him at that point. And yeah. he dropped it before he got into the bush. I, I'd like to think that it was a little bit of morality, maybe, but that's probably too kind. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it was, a, it was you know, reasonably heavy. It's like at least 15 pounds, but that shouldn't throw you mm -hmm. off. Um, so he was just juggling it in one hand and kind of and dropped it. And then it was at that point that I just snatched it back up and was look, had a look around yeah. uh, and kind of got my bearings back and then lucky is not even a description of what happened i don't even know how that happened i mean in in so many ways the decisions we made like he he could have grabbed or, or stolen from us at any point especially when we were and in the water, water. Yeah. if he ran and booked it on the sand to grab our stuff like we wouldn't have been able to get any anyway so we were just like insanely lucky and in utter, utter shock when Jewel came back with all of our stuff and just over the last 24 hours, like I haven't been able to stop replaying. Well, first of all, that moment of him being there all of a sudden, it's not, it didn't feel like um, a physical attack. It didn't seem like he wanted to like touch me, but it was just definitely that feeling of violation, personal violation with, uh, yeah, it was just, the, I've never had that happen before. So it was very, very bizarre. And normally I'm really paranoid. And the funny thing is I'm normally paranoid paranoid at busy tourist beaches because there's so many people around. And the other day we had gone to that beach with a friend and he had said like, you can leave your stuff on the sand, it's safe, there's no one here. So I kind of had that in my mind. And as much as my bag was next to me, I wasn't like strapping it around my leg. I wasn't, I didn't think to look. Again, when I saw him in the distance in the red shirt, I didn't think to like, oh, let's keep an eye on him. So now going forward, I'm going to be more paranoid and especially for around beaches where they're, they feel empty. Um, it's probably not the first time that guy has done that. Um, we're yeah, I think like the lesson, like obviously, again, we're super, super lucky and, you know, frankly, kind of dumb to bring that much stuff to the beach. It's not something we usually do. We just go out with maybe a little bit of cash and you know, and just go enjoy the water. But um, we just thought it would be better to have our stuff and didn't want to necessarily leave it in the car either. Yeah, the rental company said, don't leave anything in the car. So that's, and that's why I thought we'll keep it in my backpack. Yeah. But most of our friends here have like attested to the fact that that beach is normally pretty safe. It's usually where a lot of local families go and, and kind of have picnics and chill out. And there are little pockets of people, but the beach is so big, it, it basically, you know, it, it is empty. And um, I think, you know, probably it was just a little bit un unfortunate that we got targeted, but um, I'm sure that it's not the only time that he's probably tried something like that. Yeah. Um, but that being said, you know, it's, again, like just being vigilant. Um, I don't necessarily share paranoia, but um, being vigilant is probably a good policy and, um, you know. Yeah, there's a lot of lessons I'm taking away from it. I just am in this utter this state of reliving it and also just like, I cannot believe that we are continuing a happy vacation because had we lost all that stuff, it would just, I don't even want to think about what we could have. We basically only would have had our passports and yeah. our laptops at home. So, so lucky. And we do have another upcoming trip around Mexico. 
And that's gonna be a bit of a unique trip because we're gonna be living in a, a van. And so this experience is already making me prepare for what do I do, what do I not bring? You know, it's making me think, especially because I work in the Instagram space where there is a lot of equipment. We're digital nomads, we have a lot of tech. Um, our phones alone, like my, his phone was in the backpack. That phone alone is like $1,500, you know? And it's not even the money per se, it's just the, the fact that you're out somewhere remote and hooped. Yeah. Um, like the so. rental car company is two hours drive away. So getting an extra key for just something like that is basically a half day effort in and of itself, yeah. um, if it's even possible. So it's just a giant, it would have been a giant inconvenience. Um, and you know, I, th I think it's good karma because we actually bought a bottle of wine for this family that's traveling from Patagonia to Alaska. It's a husband, wife and their daughter and they're from Argentina. And the night before, because we're going on our van trip, um, you know, it was just like they were um, doing something so awesome and amazing. And we went to the, the store, bought um, the bottle of wine and, uh, you know, a big chocolate bar for the girl and the daughter. And um, so I figure it's like a little bit of good karma uh, that came back to us yesterday. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, look, Costa Rica is normally an incredibly safe place. I've traveled, we've both traveled all over Central America. Yeah. Um, you know, it can happen anywhere, right? But um, yeah. this is our third time in Costa Rica. Like it's, it's by and large very safe. The people are incredible. Things like this happen all over the world. It's not just here, but yeah. um, just I think unique that we were able to get back in that manner um, with only a few scratches, which is great. His feet were bleeding afterwards. Um, I think that's when you actually felt it when you came back with the bag that yeah. you were cut up. But yeah, like if that's that's what we walked away with, it's just not. It's just insanely lucky. I can't keep not saying that so we'll be a lot smarter and i won't let my guard down in places where i think we are safe like i think that's the bottom line is i'm really <laughs> paranoid around busy places but places where you feel like there's no one else like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna <laughs> relax and also everything's gonna be in a fanny pack everything's gonna be on me that's travel valuable light. <clears throat> travel yeah light. no laptops to the beach so lots of lessons learned hope you enjoyed my brief cameo <laughs> bye guys <laughs> You're not going to make a, a return ever again? Only if you have interesting stories to share. <laughs> this is the guy from Fire Festival. Oh, if you've God. seen that video. <laughs> we have a tendency to uh, have some interesting travel experiences. Yeah. Lucky enough. All right. Thanks for joining me on my channel. <laughs> Pleasure. Like and subscribe. <laughs> That's right.